I wanted to make a reacting video to Franklin Hatchett's eight passive income ideas to start in 2020. Now, if this video sounds like I'm bashing him, just know that I think he's an awesome entrepreneur. He does some amazing things and he has a really, really cool YouTube channel. So if you haven't checked him out, go and check him out. But I wanted to do a reaction video to this video because I don't really agree with everything he's saying. And if you've seen this video, let me just clean this lens. If you have seen this video, then I don't want you to necessarily be fooled, but I want you to realize that it's not actually this simple. So we're gonna watch the video and I'm going to give my, well, annotations along the video of what I feel is an accurate representation of these eight passive income ideas. So What's let's going start. On, Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite, quite a while now, and these are the best income doing any work. Okay, firstly. Money somewhere, and you get money in listen. return without doing any work. Here's just defined passive income as getting money without having to do any work. I want you to remember that sentence, okay? Because that is going to be really important for the rest of this video because there's so much just that doesn't make sense, okay? So just remember that sentence. Passive income means not having to do work and still make money. Now, let me just quickly give you my definition of passive income. I believe passive income isn't really a thing that passive income kind of exists, but it still requires at least a little bit of work. So for example, if you write a book today in 10 years time when you're getting sales from that book, technically they're passive income because the sales are coming in without you having to do anything. However, you had to originally go and create that book. So it's a kind of passive income and it's not truly passive. It's not someone just knocking on your door and being like, here's a million pounds. That would be passive income, right? So it's not that, it still requires a bit of work. So let's go through and see what his eight ideas are. Now, true passive income can only be done in a few ways, which we will be talking about in this true video. True passive but income. Some other passive income streams will require a little bit of work up front and- Okay, did you hear that? Some passive income streams will require a little bit of work up front, like I, um, like I said about the book. Okay, sometimes it, a little bit of work up front. And usually some sort of maintenance going forward, but in most cases- Maintenance going forward. So he's just, he just pretty much said that passive income means no work, except this passive income means there's maintenance. So I don't, again, that's the first it's, confusing it's bit. minimal, and we will be talking about that in this video. So idea number one is probably one of the biggest passive income streams at the moment for a lot of people, but it depends how you set it up and I'll explain to you how I set mine up in a second. But that passive income stream is created right here is each. So kind of proves that online courses and that- Okay, that true. passive income stream is creating online courses. That's what he just said. Now, again, Franklin, you're not gonna be watching this because I mean, why would you? But if you are or someone's watching this who watches him as well, I'm not bashing you. I absolutely love your channel. I love what you do. And I can see you've done really well with ClickFunnels. You've got a whole bunch of awards and you've done really well in business but I don't necessarily agree with everything you're saying. And if you wanna message me and maybe we can do a video together and go through some things, I'm down for that. But let's just quickly go through the first thing that he said. The first thing he said was creating an online course. Well, firstly, the reason why that is just not passive one bit is, well, I know I have an online course, but mainly the work upfront is so huge, right? And I know I said that it can still technically be passive if there's no work continuing going forward. However, that's not the case because the work upfront is huge. And then the upkeep of getting new sales, right? Requires marketing and advertising. So that is work. And then keeping up with your students. Now, if you're going to be the type of mentor that sells a course to a student and then forgets them and pretends they don't even exist, then yes, it could be a bit passive for you. However, that is not something I recommend doing. And as, as someone who teaches myself, I don't recommend that. You're going to end up spending a lot of time actually helping the student, getting them through the difficult stages, answering their questions, being on the Facebook group, getting on phone calls with them, that in itself is a lot of work. And as well as that, you have to continuously update the course with new information. Okay, you have to live web classes. You've got to keep it relevant because as soon as your course goes out of date, who's gonna buy it anymore? So that passive income stream is very much not passive. That requires a ton of work. So just please know that. For a lot of people, so a lot of people go and do advertising and things like that but the way I sell my online courses is through organic traffic and it's pretty much passive. All I do is a little bit of maintenance and upkeep. Right, so he sells his course through organic traffic and that is because he has 280,000 subscribers. 
that's not an income idea for me or for you or for someone who doesn't have an audience of that size. He probably has an email list of over 100,000 and a ridiculously huge YouTube channel. So that isn't really a realistic thing. But even then, okay, even if you don't have to upkeep the marketing, there is still upkeeping with the students. Keep every now and then, like updating the course every year and doing a little bit of um, You need to do it more than every year. Students. But essentially, a little bit of support for your students. Come on, come on. It's a lot more than a little bit of support. It does become very passive the way that I do it. Now, with courses, a lot of people kind of like don't. The okay. course is very slow for your content. And they have organic traffic on them. These are just places that you so can sell your course now. And create a website or blog in your blogs. So I have multiple online blogs that bring me to make passive income. Now, number two is something that you will need to put a little bit of work in to two. start but it does truly create passive income, and I'll explain to you why it's truly passive income in a second. What is and it? that is starting a YouTube channel. Now, a lot of people think that a YouTube channel isn't passive. Okay. But this particular YouTube channel that you're watching right oh, now dear. makes around about, let me just check, I think um, okay. I'm doing around about 18,000, 19, I'll put a thing up on the screen, $18,000 per month. Okay. Now, now, let me quickly go to Franklin Hatchett's YouTube channel. So he's saying that start a YouTube channel because it's a passive income. I'm sorry, YouTube is probably the least passive thing on this planet. And if you have a look at this, he posts a video a day ago, six days ago, a week ago, a week ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, three weeks ago. These are all over 10 minutes, 22 minutes, 10 minutes, 28 minutes, 16 minutes. Right, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. He's posted 14 videos in the last month. How on earth is that passive income? He's earning 18,000 a month because he's posting videos continuously. Now, I know as soon as he posts a video, he can make money off that video for months and years to come. And that is, that is true. But in order to keep the channel going, to keep the channel relevant, he's got to keep posting videos. If he just blanket stops posting videos, his $18,000 a month will go down and down and down until his YouTube channel pretty much dies. He has got to keep posting videos to keep up that momentum. So in my mind, that is in no way passive income. And as someone who creates YouTube videos, I know it takes hours and hours every single day. So there is no way that this is passive income. And if this was passive income, then I don't know what the hell passive income is because <laughs> creating a video every single day is not passive income. Most of this money. And as well as that, as well as that, it takes, it takes years to grow a a big YouTube channel and I mean you could be lucky and get it done in a couple of months and just blow up or you could be like the 99.9% .9 of people out there who take a long time to build up a YouTube channel. All of the big, the big money comes from videos that I posted months ago, one of them even over a year ago, some years ago. That's fine. Okay, so he's saying that his big, the, the most money comes from the video he posted a while ago but that is because he's still posting every single day. Like I said, if he stops posting, his channel will eventually die out like it has with so many YouTube channels, they just stop posting and then they stop getting their views and they lose their views. All right, let's Starting get to number three. Something that a lot of videos, I did a video, but work, I guess you can make joy. Don't do it on something you don't know product. You don't need to create anything. Affiliate marketing. Okay, so affiliate marketing is actually pretty solid because if, let's say, you create a video about Jungle Scout and you have an affiliate offer in there, you could potentially be getting sales continuously by getting views on that video and people going to buy your affiliate offer. But in reality, getting people to buy your offer, affiliate marketing or not affiliate marketing, requires a lot of hard work and a lot of upkeep. Now, in terms of maintaining the students or the person who's buying into the course or the tool or whatever the affiliate offer is, you don't have to maintain that person because that is for the the course owner to do, right? You're just the affiliate, you just bring them to them. So in that sense, yes, there's no upkeep, but the actual act of getting getting a customer is so difficult unless you have a huge audience like Franklin, who's got 279,000 subscribers. But for an average person like me or you, affiliate marketing <coughs> is gonna be really, really hard. So let's just skip to the next All one. All you do is need to send tracking work now, basic marketing, not on my tutorial or every time. I would in the looks Basically, go and get a software created. You can go to service, base product, software as a service. Basically, go and get a software created. You can go get a software created. To a website called upwork.com, and you can get a, get a software. Okay, so besides the fact that that's going to cost 
thousands, tens of thousands, the upkeep on software is insane. Having students or having, sorry, having people take your, use your software, you're going to have to have developers constantly working for you. You're going to have to have customer service constantly working for you. You're going to have people constantly messaging you, complaining, asking for help, trying to figure something out, something's not working, there's a bug, whatever it may be. That is not a passive, that's definitely not passive at all. That's going to require a lot of maintenance with that kind of business. Un unless, right, unless you create a software and you employ someone to, 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 to manage the whole thing and then you just take a step back and you just have no involvement, then it's passive because then you have literally created the software and left. That I would agree is a bit more passive, but if you're gonna be at all involved in the business, it's just not passive. And hire a software product. How time is it, um, it's not, no, any that is software as a service, a living wage increase at 17, and I've done in big risk time, you want to take e to America, but things that have like a lot of companies in it. So for example, I put mine in the NZ top 50, which means that my All right, he's talking about trading now, I believe. Let me just, I missed it. So let me just, yeah. One of the investors. Stock investing. Okay, so stock investing. Okay, that technically is passive. You've got to put a bit of money in. You wait a bit, you get a bit of money out, that kind of thing. The only issue is that is it's a massive risk and you kind of have to know what you're doing. If you just put money in, then you might very well lose it. So I would say my crypto has been quite passive. I, I put in a couple of thousand uh, pounds in crypto and I've made nearly 400% return. That has involved me doing absolutely nothing. Maybe, maybe every couple of weeks I go on the app on my phone and I check it or maybe I sell, but I it literally required, it's probably required about a minute's work per month. That's how little I look at it. So that in a sense could be passive income. So this is probably one of the most actual passive incomes to do. The only thing is it's really hard and it's risky and I've lost money as well. So it is really, really hard. Right, let's just skip to the next one. Let's go all the way to, oh, he's talking about this one for a long time. There we go, real estate. Okay, interesting. A lot of people get it wrong is a lot of people buy real estate because they want the price to increase and they want to make money really fast. The way I do real estate, That's the it. way I think about real estate, is if the bank's going to give me a mortgage or a loan, and I can buy a property, and I can collect rent from that property, then essentially someone else is paying off that mortgage. Okay. He makes a good point, right? If you can afford to get another mortgage and rent out that property, then 100% do it. Now, is that passive? Well, kind of, depending on how you do it. If, it, when you have a tenant, you, it takes a lot to upkeep that tenant to make sure they're happy to answer any of their queries to, you know, keep the property building, keep the building going. There could be problems here and there, keeping up with insurances and all these other kind of things. Now, if you have a property management, if you if you have like a management company that you've employed to oversee all your properties, then 100% I agree that is passive income and that is something I'm desperate to start doing as soon as I possibly can. Because in my mind, you find a property, you get the property and then you employ someone to oversee that property and you can take a step back. That in my mind is passive income because the person paying rent is paying off your mortgage and it's just brilliant. However, a lot of the time people will manage the property themselves or feel like they are invested in the property themselves. And if that's the case, then it is not passive income because you are very involved in what is going on. For me, and then in 20 or 30 years time. Okay, let's have a look. What's number? I don't know what number we're up to, to be honest. Uh, there we go, number You can start a blog on seven. any particular niche. Starting a blog? The best thing about blogging is you can do the flat marketing with blogging. How is starting a blog passive income? Starting a blog is like starting a YouTube channel, right? You've got to create the content. If you stop creating the content to your blog, it's going to eventually die. So how on earth is creating a blog passive income. I just don't understand. This This was my confusion, which is why I wanted to make this video. Like, no hate or anything, but I just don't understand. So explain it to me maybe, right? Creating a blog requires you to create articles and blog posts constantly and constantly, and that takes so long. Yes, you're making money from it, but you have to continuously create new blog posts. So how on earth is that passive? You can sell your course with blogging. Right, so he's saying it's passive because you'll be able to put your course, you'll be able to put affiliate offers on, and your blog post that gets views months and months after viewing them is making you money, which is fine. 
technically that would be passive because you make the article and then three months down the line you get a sale you get a few sales that, that you didn't have to do anything to get those sales except create the initial blog but upkeeping a blog requires you to post every single however often not every day but however often and that's certainly not a passive at all right let's have a look at number eight hopefully this is a passive one you need to do with blogging is blog about specific topics and get websites so amazon amazon affiliate okay what does that even mean so an amazon affiliate is someone who basically will lead you to the amazon website as an affiliate and if you buy something through their link they will get commission on it so if you have a look at any of the people who are reviewing products or anything like that you will see tons of you'll see tons of links to the products they're reviewing to and to the Amazon page, right? That technically is an Amazon affiliate. Now, is that passive? Again, it's something that if you create now in a couple of months down the line, you could continuously be getting clicks to that link and getting sales. However, you have got to upkeep the channel. So if you're getting, if you're using your Amazon affiliate link on YouTube, you've got to upkeep the channel. If you're using it on your blog post, you've got to upkeep the channel, like your, your, your website, your blog, like, it requires a lot of upkeep and we're talking hours every single week, lots and lots and lots of hours every single week. I spend easily one to two hours a day on a YouTube video. So, I mean, I know it's not a nine hour a day job, but it's certainly not passive, right? It requires work. It would be passive if I could create a video and I didn't have to do another video ever in my life and that video just made me tons of money, but that doesn't exist. All right, let's see how he ends it. Click right now that will take you through step by step. Uh, so now he's just selling his course. Right, so like I said, Franklin, I've got nothing against you. Literally, if you're watching this, you're not, but if you're watching this, I've got nothing against you. I just don't understand this video one bit. If you haven't checked out the video, then go to his channel and check out the video. But actually, I would say maybe don't check out the video because I don't believe any of the information is actually accurate. None of those things are passive income and none of those things are as easy as he is letting them off to be. They are actually really, really difficult. So yeah, that is what I wanted to say in this video. I hope that made sense. I don't usually do hate or anything like that. And that's why <clears throat> this wasn't a hateful video. I just wanted to make you aware that Passive income, it does kind of exist, but not the way you probably think. It's a lot less passive. The idea of passive income doesn't really exist, right? You're, there's always going to be some sort of work or some sort of upkeep involved, except for maybe, like I said, the real estate, having someone work for you, then you're just paying them. But that is it for this video. I hope that made sense. I hope you liked it. If you haven't already subscribed, I think like 60 or 70% of my viewers are subscribed. So hit that subscribe button right there. And yeah, I'm so close to 7,000 right now, and then I, I want to get to 10,000, so definitely hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I will see you in tomorrow's video.